What's the word, y'all? We back. Um, as you can probably tell, I ain't been having fun reacting to highlights. I feel like I've seen all the highlights, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, these articles are way more fun. I get to actually talk about basketball instead of just, like, one specific player for the highlight. So, leave a like um, and subscribe if you are new. That is actually super important to me that you subscribe if you are new. One off-season trade every NBA team should already be thinking about. Y'all yeah, know we love trades. You know we love off-season talk. So here we go. Zach Buckley usually puts together some cool articles. I'm not saying I agree with everything he be saying, but at least, at least they're cool enough for us to disagree with. All right, we good? Okay, let's go. First team will be the Atlanta Hawks. What's the name of this article again? <laughs> One trade. Okay, a trade. Sign a trade for Brandon Ingram. Sure. Sure, of course. Yeah, they should be thinking about this. It's whether or not the Pelicans would be thinking about doing something like this. I guess the real question comes down to uh, how well Zion and Brandon Ingram mesh together on the court because they haven't played that many games together or anything like that. So it makes sense. And Brandon Ingram's up for a contract. And Brandon Ingram, him being an all-star, is probably going to want, you know, some a, a max a close to it. And we have to figure out, oh, the Pelicans have to figure out um, what they want to do with Brandon Ingram. I would say keep them. Because talent is talent. But it's not always the way it works. You know what I'm saying? So it makes sense for the Atlanta Hawks to get another guy next to Trey Young that can that can score and do a little bit of everything out there. Even his playmaking has increased this season. My MIP. Next, upgrading that center with Miles Turner. Yes, this is like a match made in heaven. Um, he is a, a rim protector. Obviously, one of the best rim protectors in the league. He provides some much-needed spacing. Uh, offensive game is not that bad. I like Miles Turner's game. And I think he would fit greatly with uh the Boston Celtics now how do you make that happen though do they have any kind of trades uh Gordon Hayward returned to his hometown of Indianapolis so that's the trade they build up Pacers fans what y'all think about something like that I'm really curious so next uh Brooklyn Nets forming a big three we talked about this on the last video yes I think they should be definitely trying to trade for Bradley Beal just whether or not the Wizards are looking to actually make a trade get rid of Bradley Beal Sign and trade for everybody. Let's sign and trade Brandon Ingram. He's that nice. Every team. Okay. I would I would wonder what what would the Pelicans get in return in a sign and trade for Brandon Ingram from the Hornets specifically. Uh, Miles Bridges draft considerations. I mean, sure, but I mean, ah, uh, ah. Eh. I'd pass. Flipping Thaddeus Young for youth. Yeah, the Thaddeus Young experiment was cool. I like the idea of this signing. He's a locker room guy, uh, as everybody will tell you in their postseason. Well, not the postseason, but, like, a lot of the interviews. Um, his family was really nice. They all, they set, like, the section over for me at every Bulls game. They were really nice and everything. Um, but we asked Thaddeus Young to do a lot of things that he's not accustomed to doing in his whole career. Uh, we asked him to become a stretch four, and he wasn't terrible at it. I think he shot, like, league average percentage, like 35%, 36%, which is cool. But it's just, it just wasn't where you capitalize the most on Thaddeus Young's game. So, sure, flip it for young assets. Flip everybody for young assets if that's what you want to do. But who is giving us young assets for Thaddeus Young is the real question. Like, is they are they going to mention somebody? Uh, the Portland Trail Blazers for Nas Little. Or for Troy Brown Jr., hell yeah, I'll take any of those trades. Sure, give us a young player that we can bet on, for sure. Nas Little's like one of the top high school prospects, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, I'll take that. Dumping Kevin Love. Oh, man, we already given up on Kevin Love after his extension. I guess it makes sense. He's 31 years old. As you can see, $91.5 million over the next three seasons. That boy took that money and then was like, actually, I don't want to be here. Thanks for the paycheck, but uh, you should trade me. And I think, yeah, I think it works well for them. You got to figure out what team would be interested in, in buying on Kevin Love. And I think that's also a problem. Uh, but, yeah, next team. Grabbing Rudy Gobert. I am very interested in this one because I, I keep seeing things like uh, Mavericks, Victor Oladipo. That's what I keep seeing. But to see them say Victor Oladipo, I mean, to see them say Rudy Gobert is actually very interesting. Uh, we've already talked about Rudy Gobert's contract situation coming up over the next couple seasons. Adding him to the Mavericks, like a 7-2, seven, 7-2 seven, seven, Porzingis, 7-3 seven, Porzingis, and a 7-2, seven, 7-1 seven, Rudy Gobert front court would be ridiculous. Uh, that would be cool. That would be cool. A pick and roll with Rudy Gobert and Luka Doncic is gonna be, would be legendary. But how do you make it happen? Uh, Tim Hardaway Jr., Jalen Brunson, and multiple first-round picks. Does Utah accept that? Because that leaves a big old hole in that center position for them. Uh, the Bradley guy, the young young buck, he's, he's all right, but uh, that's, a, that's a big hole. And then you're getting pieces that you don't necessarily need because you still have Mike Conley for another season, whether you like it or not. You still have Donovan Mitchell. So I don't know. 
I don't know. Next, given Nikola Jokic a sidekick. They didn't say who it was going to be. They, they mentioned Bradley Beal in this picture. But, yes, um, I do like Jamal Murray. Do not get me wrong. But I, for me to trust in Denver Nuggets and, and being a championship-level team, I need either Jamal Murray to take a step or for this to happen, them trade for a guy that we already know is, like, bona fide star-level player. And, yeah, Bradley Beal is going to come up a lot because it's, it's freaking Bradley Beal and he averaged 30 points per game this season. Trade for Beal. And he could form a one-two punch with the Joker, fully capable of trading blows with playoff teams like the Warriors, the Clippers, and the Lakers. Uh, add Beal in Denver, prize open his championship window for the next five years. I agree. Flipping Derrick Rose fast sets, yes. Trade Derrick Rose. Get him out of Detroit. 100% agree. Turning a top pick into John Collins. I keep, I keep seeing this. I keep hearing this specifically from I think it's from Zach Buckley I don't know why the Atlanta Hawks would be giving up on John Collins or breaking up that pair maybe it's something I didn't see when I watched them play but for me there's no reason to split up Trey Young and John Collins right now for me again maybe I'm missing something Atlanta Hawks fans let me know because y'all are the ones that's watching every single game I don't watch every single game I tune in but I don't watch every single game trading him away to get younger and get more draft picks doesn't really make sense to me um Especially since this year's draft isn't like a a star player necessarily. I mean, sure, anything can happen. But like, it's not like that one guy. It's not like we got Luka Doncic in the straight. It's not like we have Zion Williamson in this draft class. So trading him when they their whole objective with the Clint Capella deal is to try to help Trey Young win now. If we're going to trade Trey Young's second best player for somebody that's 19, you think Trey Young's all like that? I don't, I don't think so. Trey Young's ready to win. He's ready to try to win, at least. And trading away his second best player would be just weird. I don't know. Maybe I'm wild enough. Next, swapping Eric Gordon for a healthy shooter. Sure. I mean, they gave Eric Gordon a, a big-time bag for a player like him. Um, I was just seeing it in 2K and thinking, like, bro, y'all really paid that man that much money. Uh, and Eric Gordon's a good player, don't get me wrong, but he's, he struggled this season specifically with his shot. And, yeah. I don't know what team be willing to take on that contract and give you assets that are beneficial. Next, bringing home Gordon Hayward. Oh, so just they just showed us the trade with the Boston Celtics. It's like, you know what? Let's just put it on his head. I mean, we already got – they already got – they got some decent amount of wings, right? I mean, I guess this opens up the floor for Sabonis to be the full-time center. Um, I, I don't necessarily love this trade. Getting big with Gobert. Gobert's is out there. With that contract extension in the in the clouds, he's just out there for any team to try to snag. So, what are the assets you give up? Say goodbye to Patrick Beverly, Zubats, Landry Shaman get traded again, and multiple future picks at the very least. Multiple future picks. Didn't they just give up a 1,000 picks to get Paul George? Do they got more picks to even trade? I don't know, man. Uh, using Cal Kuzma to get Spencer Dinwiddie. What? Okay. The Nets are a team that's trying to compete. And though they already have Kyrie Irving, especially then when he's a good backup, right? Do we trade one of the best backup PGs in the league for Kyle Kuzma when we're trying to win a championship? If you're the Brooklyn Nets, do you do that? I don't do that if I'm the Brooklyn Nets. I'm sorry. I, I can't do that. doesn't even make much sense to me. I mean, unless you're doing a Bradley Beal trade first and then you need another. I, I don't know. I don't know. Finding a bargain prospect. That's what they did actually at the trade deadline with um, Justice Winslow, who just got injured again a couple days ago, which is tragic. They turned somebody who wasn't playing for them and Iggy into a guy that even though he's been injury prone and he hasn't played in a, a long time, he still has upside. And they're trying to find that again. They already got DeAnthony Melton, who is also a, kind of a bargain thing too. The... The front office of the Memphis Grizzlies are doing a very good job in their rebuild. So, sure, continue to do this. Continue to do that. Betting big on Drew Holiday. Mm, can you imagine Jimmy Butler, Drew Holiday, and Bam Adebayo defensively on the court together? Oh, my God. I don't want to. Who's scoring? Who's scoring? But in this hypothetical trade, in this hypothetical trade, Holiday isn't big enough to warrant Tyler Hero, Bam Adebayo, but the Pels could walk away with Kendrick Nunn, Duncan Robinson, and... Ke Hey, Duncan Robinson's got this cult following in Heat Nation, baby. I don't know if you want to give Duncan Robinson away. But Drew Holiday is such an underrated player. Um, I personally would give up Duncan Robinson. I'm just saying that maybe a diehard Heat fan that's seen him every single game this season won't do this. But Drew Holiday is so, so good of a player. Um, and la remember last year, he averaged like 20 points per game. This year, obviously, he didn't do that because he's got more pieces around him to score the ball. 
but he is a he is a elite defender. I had him on my all defensive first team this year. I think he was there last year too, and maybe even a year before that. That boy defends. I just say that that boy defends, and um, I, I would be interested in that trade, the hypothetical trade. Picking up the point guard. I know I'd be super happy to see Chris Paul go to a team that's trying to win it all. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know. I've heard a lot of different rumors within like the OKC, um, the beat writers and stuff talk about what the direction of OKC is going to be because obviously they exceeded expectations this year and there's a couple different routes they can go. They can sell now and continue to stockpile assets and, and try to build through the draft or they can continue to stay with this roster and just use those draft picks from the Paul George trade and such and such to get those young assets. This is like getting Chris Paul and getting rid of him uh, so you don't have to pay him that money. And something tells me it would be for Eric Bledsoe and something on top of that because Eric Bledsoe's contract doesn't match that. But that would that would probably help Giannis decide that he wants to stay or it could push Giannis away because Chris Paul is hard to play with. <laughs> it's one of the two. It's one of the two. Uh, but obviously it would make them a better player to upgrade their point guard position from a good point guard to still a great point guard. Next. Boost the offense with Buddy Hield. Okay, so how do we do this, though? What what trade are we putting together for this? Because, and then Beasley, a high-level thread. I don't know what trade we put together to do this, but sure, on paper, I would love to see. That would be great for them. You know what I'm saying? D'Angelo Russell, Buddy Hield, Carthony Carlton Towns, giving up 140 points a game, but they might score 142 points a game, and then it don't really matter how many points you gave away. Parent Zion Williamson with John... What am I missing about John Cop? I, I swear to God, I'm reading every single comment in today's video. Can somebody please explain to me why the Atlanta Hawks will be willing to deal John Collins right now? I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Uh, the ideal sounds like awful lot, doesn't it? Okay, I don't understand. Going all in for Devin Booker, sure. Whatever assets you have, it bring, but then Devin Booker goes from a situation where his team has struggled to make the playoffs to a situation. With team is struggling to make the playoffs. I mean, it's just like a lateral move for Devin Booker, but at least he's playing on a bigger stage. I don't think the Suns are selling Devin Booker, especially when you consider that DeAndre Aiden missed 25 games because of his expansion, suspension, and they have looked pretty decent together. I don't think the Suns are trading you Devin Booker unless he walks into the office and say, okay, I demand a trade. But sure, what is going all in? What, what do you have? So you got your first round pick this year is going to be like a top five pick. Julius Randle, Frank Nielakina. I don't do that deal. Ew. Yeah. No, no, no. Not for Devin Booker. No, 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 no. Shut in Chris Paul's, yes, Albatross, Al Albatross's contract. Yes. We talked about that already. Getting DeMar DeRozan for cheap. We Yes, I've seen this all around. But what is considered cheap for DeMar DeRozan? Um, he might be looking for a way out of his $27 million deal. I don't know if that's true. Unless he just really hates the time in San Antonio. $27 million is a lot of money for a guy like DeMar DeRozan to just be like, eh, I'm good. Next, swapping Al Horford for Eric Gordon. Can you imagine that trade? The Al Horford experiment has not been amazing so far this season. I can say that. It has not been amazing. But can you, trading him for Eric Gordon just sounds sounds really bad. It just sounds really, really bad. And that's how bad, um, when you consider Al Horford's contract, how less of a asset he is yeah you know i'm saying because his contract is so huge and this year he hasn't been very good but for the rockets sake i mean if y'all really trying to run that five out al horford can't help you do that bro he ain't a lob threat like clink Capella was but he'll stretch that floor for you he'll hit his open threes bring a Larry market back to arizona all right what do we get in this trade um young wings mikhail bridges or cam johnson i would rather have mikhail bridges than cam johnson because to me cam johnson is 34 years old i don't care he's old he's old um <laughs> Pairing a first-round pick with Mikael Bridges, I would personally not do this deal if I'm the Bulls, but I've mentioned this on my, my live stream yesterday. Whatever trade the Bulls do in the next season or two or whatever, I'm not going to look at it on paper and make my judgment immediately. I trust my new front office because that front office, that guy, that guy, Cardi Chauvas, our new VP, executive vice president, he drafted Bo Bo. Y'all saw Bo Bo was looking like last last night. So uh, yeah, 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 whatever, whatever. Um, so whatever decide whatever they decide to do, I'm not gonna be upset about. But I would say if this was our trade, a future first round pick, Mikael Bridges and Ty Jerome, I'm not gonna be super excited about it. Even though Mikael Bridges is my homie and see him playing in Chicago would be dope. Break up the backcourt for Ben Simmons. Um, now does Philly say yes to CJ McCollum deal? 
Anthony Simons. Uh, I mean, it, it'd be interesting on paper to see something like this happen. But again, on paper, don't really translate all the time. But if something like this happened, it would it would destroy NBA Twitter for sure. And I, I like when stuff like that happen. Uh, sending Buddy Hill to Brooklyn. We just send him Buddy Hill everywhere. Send him wherever he wants to go. Cool. Finding more draft picks for the Spurs. Yes, it's time to hit that reset button. Aggressively pursuing a Giannis deal. Excuse me? Trade it. Oh, well, this is like contingent on if Giannis don't sign a Supermax and the Bucks are like, okay, maybe we need to trade him because we don't think he's going to sign. But what do we, what do you, how do you pull off a, a Giannis deal? Likely built around Cal Lowry, OG Adenomi, and Terrence Davis. Add a few draft picks to the equation, and it might be Milwaukee making the tough. Ah. Finding the stretch big, okay. Finding win now trade values. I don't think Julius Randle helps you win basketball games. Personally. That's that's my opinion. But you know what? That's the article, man. This is fun. I love articles that talks about trades and talks about the offseason. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, Hawks fans. I'm really looking forward to you. What do you think about the John Collins getting traded here and there in every single article I read? Because I don't understand it.